But the best song on Speak Now, according to this panel of experts, is Better Than Revenge. Julia, this was, I knew this was going to be your number one. I had zero surprise when this was your number one. Like, oh, like the catty bitchy song is Julia's number one. I am so surprised. (laughs) What a shocker. Yeah, no surprise. We were right to say it. We were right to put this one at number one. Um, here's here's why I like this song. One, the slut shaming. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, what I love is that stupid ass megaphone. Every single thing she does with that wouldn't have suspected it. I'm like. I'm eating it up. I'm always like yelling. I was yelling those parts at Victor every single time just because like they make me laugh so much. Where she's just in the back going like, "No, no!" I'm like, "This is so fucking dumb." I love it. It's like it's stupid fun. Um, I, I love how this song. Let me, let me consult the album really quick because this song is perfectly nestled. Because after after we do the, like, hey, guys, bullying is wrong. You shouldn't bully. Don't bully me for being a bad singer. Then she's like, where the hell is it? It's it's like, oh, never grow up. Cry, cry. Oh, it's so nice to meet you, Owl City. And then she's like, fuck that girl. She's a slut and a whore. And then she's like, oh, Kanye. Forgive Kanye. He didn't know what he's doing. It's so fucking funny every time this song has no business being on this record it is so totally diametrically opposed to every other song of this record where it's like oh forgive yourself do better that girl is a whore she's still joe jonas get out of here you bimbo i love it i love it it makes me so happy it truly has no business being being here but at the same time for me this paramore ripoff is the most fun i have hold on julia you cut off we need we need to get this we need to get this great context you cut off the last like sentence or so oh uh what was i saying i uh talk about how much you love this paramore ripoff paramore song yeah i was like oh this is the only song on this album i would listen to outside of this like i would actually listen to this in my spare time because all of it's so funny also the uh taylor's version lyrics are not oh yeah no they they got rid of the slut shaming in the taylor's version and i no good and i mean honestly, how we got rid of the homophobia before we got rid of picture to burns homophobia it's not as good we get rid of better than revenge is slut shaming it's not as good so i actually uh Sorry. man i hate that like i'm still a centrist at heart i'm trying to be a full-on marxist I do think getting rid of the homophobia in uh, Pitch to Burn is good, but also I think the slut shaming here should uh, stay because it's like a really like personal, visceral attack against someone you feel stole your boyfriend by like seducing him and having sex with him. So like I, I think like that level of like cattiness and pettiness is appropriate for like how personal and visceral that is versus calling someone gay is just like homophobic versus like this isn't necessarily slut shaming, but more just I mean it is, but it's also like. It this is. person personally harmed it's... you in in a way but where – and you're calling them out for the personal harm. Do anything. Joe Jonas broke up with her. He I mean, didn't cheat on her, and he's not a possession. No one stole anyone. He didn't belong to Taylor Swift. That's, that's true. He's an individual. It's a very backwards way of thinking. I remember my mom did not like this song because she's like, she should not be writing about this man as if he is an object. And I was like – don't care. The girl's a <laughs> slut. <laughs> and, you know, counter to your mom, I mean, in fairness, like, she is a bad actress. Like, she's just not very good. Yeah. I mean, that part is true. Like, that, that is, like, an objective like, fact of reality. Like, oh, yeah, she's just, yeah, she isn't good. She is. The line about stealing other people's toys on the playground, while very funny, is also a bit horrifying when you remember that this is a human being she is talking about. It does go... <laughs> It does go both ways. I don't think we should uh, talk about. And again, I know she's like twenty years old, so she's also like not. Uh, her brain isn't her... finished developing. And yeah, also, like you know, th- th- think about like the whatever. stupid things that the people around you said when they were twenty. Like Taylor Swift comes off as remarkably mature for a twenty-year-old. Like all things considered, like 
there's a lot of stuff she says that's really stupid and dumb. But I, I mean, we all said stupid stuff and when we were dumb, and it just we just didn't have the I platform like she did. Friends, I feel like all my friends were not like this. I don't feel like any of us were. And to be fair, I was that friend too. Where if I heard any of my friends say something like this, I'm like, I'm actually not backing you on this one. I know we're always supposed to have each other's backs as as friends, as girls. But like, I fully would call people on, and did call people on stuff like this and saying it. Or I'm like. Yeah, I, I get that you're mad at this girl. Like, that's fine. But, like, we don't need to bring it to this level. But, you know, we all, we all, uh, we all work in our own ways. So, and, and to be fair, the entertainment value I get from this song makes me go, don't care. I will sing every word. I love this song. I mean, the cattiness is through the roof on this song, and it's, like, it is fun. And I think the problem with, like, the Taylor's version that it, like, it tries to remove some of the venom and cattiness from it, but, like, that's the point. And so, like, you can, you know, say this isn't who I am anymore. I don't want to necessarily continue to do that and have as negative feelings towards this person. But, like, you got to let the art stay the art because, like, that just, it loses that impact when you take that away. We all know that's not who she is now, but it's who you were. That's okay. You learned and, and you're better now. And you grew, but thank God you didn't grow enough at that point. You could leave us with this sick song. Exactly. I needed this one, so thank you for not maturing just yet out of this <laughs> sort of behavior. I would come four years later. She recanted <laughs> in 2014 when she said, uh, you know, when she wrote this song, she thought that somebody could steal your steal your boyfriend, but then she realized somebody can't be stolen unless they want to leave. Very well said. Good job, Taylor. Yeah, so like she matured. Wait, wait. Uh, so Steve, what are your thoughts so this on was, this one? This was this is the third song in my trilogy where my notes are just the lyrics to uh, an emo song all in capitals. So I just wrote down second chances, they don't ever matter. People never change. Once a whore, you're nothing more, honey. That'll never change. Um, I, I I put this one about fourth. Uh, I liked it. I liked the 90s alt-rock arrangement. I like falsetto and I like woes. Those are great musical choices. Uh, all of the parts that Julie is most passionate about are the parts I did not like. <laughs> I honestly don't really like the, the catty slut shaming and uh, the the yelling with the megaphone every couple of lines. Like, no, that's so sorry. Cheesy. I'm I'm I, with Julia. Hard with Julia on this one. I that's it's like the best part of the song. I mean, it, and the riffs are good. Like, I think it was, it's got sick riffs, bro. I think it was fine on story of us, but I was not excited about it here. It's These are like some Ted Nugent esque riffs on this song. Just killer. You've just got to learn to lean into it, Steve. Like just like start singing along on just those parts and I swear it'll change your perspective of the song because if you're just going around like wouldn't have suspected it and you have to do it really like that like really like very catty and then all of a sudden you're like this song takes on a life of its own where you're just like I'm like Taylor Swift should invite me on stage to perform that song just hand me the megaphone and let me do that fucking part because like I will I'll tear it down I'm ready <laughs> the most positive Julia has been on any of these episodes because we finally got like a really catty bitchy song. <laughs> uh, and actually this might be the most positive Julia has been on any of these episodes. Um, I don't know if it's because speak now is the one she enjoyed the most. We'll get to that after we get my to Mike's thoughts, but yeah, this is like the most positive we've ever gotten from Julia. Uh, Mike, what are your thoughts on, on this song in particular and uh, ranking number one? Yeah, I mean, obviously it spoke to the rocker in me. I'm cool with number one because I had it at my number two. Um, I even, I wondered if it was my number one. I don't know. I I feel like it's more of a rocker even than the story of us, but I just like the story of us better. But um, not a whole lot to add that hasn't already been said. The, although the one thing that stood out to me, you know, listening to this album for the first time, um, this is the one that first made me realize, like, okay, Taylor Swift's gotten a little bit older now. She's getting a little more... Um, um, you know, like, I want to say mature. I mean, mature, like, mature for her age at that time. I don't mean, like, uh, I've tamed. You know, I don't mean a tamed maturity. I mean, mature versus a 13-year-old girl or whatever. Right. Um, because she's singing about, like, you know, things this chick does on the mattress. And I was like, oh, oh, okay, Taylor Swift's getting a little more 
you know, it's not, not R-rated, but she's getting a little more suggestive with her lyrics and, and the things she's singing about. Like, okay, this is definitely a transitional Taylor Swift album, uh, lyrically, stylistically. Like, okay, enough years, you know, only a few years really in, in, in the big scheme of things, but enough years uh, at that point in your life makes a huge difference. I'm like, okay, this really, you know, is a new Taylor Swift. Um, so that stood out to me. Yeah, the whole megaphone thing or whatever is just so like, I'm like I I get it, but it's like it's kind of like do I laugh? Do I cringe a little bit? Do I do I roll with it? I I like Julia's point. You just gotta really lean into it. Like yeah, it's both. I like it that. is because yeah, there's other songs like just by other artists where I do that. There's like parts where I'm like, don't know if I love that, but I'm gonna lean into it. Yeah, it's cringe, but it's free. Just lean into it. Let it take you where it wants to go. Cause like it sucks, but it's hilarious. It's so fun. Also, it's like stupid fun to sing along with. It's like the, the Kiss song, Let's Put the X in Sex. We're just like, this is so stupid and so yeah, over the top and it's silly yeah, yeah. and it's kind of cringe, but that's why it's sick. <laughs> like, that is exactly where this lands. Like, in the video, he makes you just literally got to make the X when you're listening to the song. Yeah. Right. So you just got to lean into the goofiness, lean into the silliness, and but still, like, it's, you know, it is the uh, strongest song on this country album because this is a country album. <laughs> <laughs> Which is something people also started to make fun of her for. Like, she's not really a country artist anymore. And this is where, like, they, it was a little bit of it on the first two albums, but this is where that criticism really started to land. And I think that's a good point for us to, again, do closing thoughts on the album. 